Welcome to Ask the Expert. This is a brief, informative, and lively discussion with experts in type 1 diabetes and related interdisciplinary research. We're recording this event and we'll post it on the Sugar Side site YouTube channel shortly after the presentation. If you have presence, uh, questions for our guests, please feel free to enter them in the chat or raise your hand at the end of the presentation. And today we have as our guest, Antoon van Oosterhout, ESO of IMSEIS, based in Liege, Belgium. And uh, I guess I would like to say good morning and bonjour <laughs> for, uh, from our side. I guess it's in the evening for you guys, but welcome. Um, I'd like to just give a little background about Antoon van Oosterhout. He is a highly experienced immunologist and pharmacologist with a proven track record in pharma and academia. He's been involved in building and maintaining multidisciplinary international collaborations, and he has over 150 publications in peer-reviewed top journals in the fields of respiratory diseases, allergy, immunology, and pharmacology. He's been at IMSI since uh, January 2020 to present, um, and he prior to that, he was the VP and head, allergy, uh, head of allergic uh, inflammation DPU at GSK. And prior to that, he was uh, an academic in um, the Netherlands. Some of his papers, he has a, he has a wide range of sort of papers and um, reach with his, um, in, in his academic uh, exercises. One, uh, you know, we can go all the way from understanding the complexity of IG related phenotypes from childhood to uh, young adult uh, mechanisms of the development of allergy, a seminar in 2012, to differential DNA methylation in bronchial biopsies between persistent asthma and asthma re remission in 2020. So, IMSYS is a really interesting company. Um, its approach to immune tolerance could also be considered as immune deletion of the specific immune cells involved in the immune reaction rather than immune suppression. This is really unique and it's really different from what most others in the field are trying to accomplish. Uh, you know, example, like as an example, the induction of Tregs. So in layman's terms, it appears to be a creation of sniper CD4s that destroy specific APC, which were destined to destroy, for instance, the pancreatic beta cell. And so you can avoid T1D and other um, diseases, uh, which are their targets. They have multiple POC around T1D and other diseases such as MS, RA, to name a few. It was a big February for size. three big things happening. Uh, number one, others are showing confidence with raising 21.3 million euros in series B financing round with Pfizer's the newest shareholder. Uh, with number two, IMSITES entered into research collaboration with li and license agreement for Im its Imatope trademark technology with Pfizer in RA. And finally, IMSITES announced the start of the phase 1B 2A impact study in patients with recent onset type 1 diabetes in collaboration with Enodia. So congratulations on all this hard work and excellent outcomes um, and welcome, Antoine. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Monica, for the uh, nice introduction. And good morning, uh, everybody. And and, and happy uh, that you uh, are joining this uh, this uh, uh, expert meeting uh, where I can talk about uh, IMSIS. But let me first start to share my screen. Yeah. Um, can, can, can you give us a quick thumbnail sketch of your, I mean, I've talked sort of like about your career path. Um, but could okay. you give us a quick thumbnail sketch of your interpretation of your career path, how you got here, and what excites you most about the research you're working on right now? Yeah, if, if, from my perspective, it's a logical path. Uh, I've always been uh, a lot interested in uh, translational uh, medicine, bringing what you discover in uh, science, basic science, and translate that to uh, benefit for, uh, for patients. And that I've done uh, a lot in, in where I worked on, uh, on asthma, which is also an immune driven uh, disease where I tried to uh, work on uh, immunotherapies uh, with, the, uh, with the ultimate goal to uh, really uh, cure uh, patients or to give uh, long term benefit. Now that is a huge challenge but uh, it's a way uh, uh, that we need to uh, take and uh, it's going to be a very exciting uh, and then certainly for the patients uh, in the end that will benefit uh, from this compared to the current type of treatment. So that is more or less what, what, what I've been pursuing in my career. I did that first more on, on the science uh, part. Then I, uh, I also did a sabbatical at, uh, at Genentech where I was really uh, excited about uh, how biotech companies uh, work and uh, what they can accomplish. 
And then coming back in, uh, in the Netherlands, I was uh, actually very much excited and wanted to start a, a biotech company uh, myself, spinning out from the university. But unfortunately, that was not uh, successful. But uh, I mentioned it because I learned a lot on that way to try and uh, develop a company, how to be really uh, at the cutting edge of science uh, so uh, uh, that you can patent uh, new ideas and new technologies. Uh, but also uh, part of the financing and, and how to uh, motivate uh, and excite people uh, for, for such a project. So I learned, I learned a lot, but uh, I, I uh, moved to a, a more academic uh, hospital setting where I could uh, work much better on these translational aspects of uh, drug uh, discovery and development. And uh, there I had the opportunity to work with clinicians on, on, on patient samples and, and being part of clinical studies. Uh, so I, I, I learned a lot uh, in that clinical setting. It was still uh, focused on, on asthma. And after about uh, 10 years, then uh, GSK approached me uh, to uh, come to uh, Stevenage in the United Kingdom to head up the uh, asthma discovery uh, and early development uh, unit and that was really uh, exciting it's, they had a, a very nice structure where these uh, units were more or less operating like a small biotech company in a big pharma company and so you had uh, quite a, a, a lot of freedom to operate with a certain budget you had to make business plans for your uh, for your focus group in my case that was uh, new therapies that would drive asthma remission so uh, a cure for asthma and unfortunately, uh, after uh, six years, uh, and what you see quite often in big pharma companies, they changed uh, the, the focus and direction. And uh, that was at the time that Hal Barron, actually also coming from Genentech, uh, was recruited. Uh, and, and he changed uh, the course to uh, more uh, immuno-oncology at the expense of uh, respiratory, but also the structure of the small biotech units in a big company changed. And it became much more a top-down uh, uh, classic uh, pharma structure, which uh, was not very exciting for me. And so I, uh, I looked further and I came uh, through my network. I came in touch with, uh, with Imsize. And I was, uh, I was uh, happily surprised because, because it was really, uh, let's say, close to what I wanted to achieve, but maybe more in the asthma field, which is another immune-driven disease, but now in autoimmune diseases. That is to find uh, ways to drive cure or, or long-term benefit in patients suffering from these chronic uh, uh, and high unmet uh, need uh, uh, diseases. Well, that was seren and, uh, that was serendipitous, and uh, I'm glad things you know I'm glad things didn't work out to be honest at GSK because now you're in a great position at Imsice to drive this um, to drive this work forward. And I mean, so, I mean, this is fantastic. I think, you know, you bring a wealth of experience to really drive this forward and um, the enthusiasm as well. Are you uh, interested in sort of like going to slides and sharing some of the, the work in Imsize? Yes. All right, let's go. Give me I'm uh... excited to see this and share this. I love some of the visuals on your, um, your website, um, some of the graphics. Oh, these even look even. These look even better. Let me see if this works. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. I need to find the pointer that I can use and get maybe some of the pictures out of my view. Okay, good. So uh, again, thanks for giving the opportunity to present uh, Imsize and what we do uh, here in this, uh, to this audience. Uh, so uh, our, our technology platform is uh, Imatopes and these are to prevent and cure autoimmune uh, diseases. Now for uh, nearly 4% of the, of the world's population is actually suffering from uh, one of the over 100 autoimmune diseases. And uh, these patients currently have no cure uh, and so they uh, suffer from these diseases, although there are some uh, treatments available that ameliorate the symptoms. Uh, but we think we have a technology that could actually address uh, uh, and give uh, long-term benefits. So I'll say a few words about the, the company. 
So as I mentioned, we are developing uh, first in class targeted uh, disease modifying immunotherapies that uh, uh, should have a long term effect uh, after a short term treatment. And uh, you can compare it more or less with the, with the therapeutic vaccine. So IMSIS uh, was uh, also a spin out from the uh, university in, uh, in Leuven in 2011. Is lo currently located in Liège and has about 30 uh, employees. We uh, are still a private uh, but clinical stage uh, biopharmaceutical company, and we are pioneering the development of these next generation of antigen specific immunotherapies for the treatment of these chronic autoimmune diseases. I already mentioned the unique, uh, unique Imatope uh, technology platform that we are uh, using, and I will say uh, a bit more about that further down in the presentation. Our current lead Imatope is uh, MC98, which is currently in, in phase two clinical trials for type one diabetes. And I will uh, briefly mention later on in the, in the slide deck, uh, some of the preclinical work that we did. And in the August meeting of Sugar Science, there will be a more a presentation on the clinical work uh, that has been done in the phase one study, but also what the plan is, uh, what the, actually the, the uh, uh, phase two study looks like. Fantastic. And as, you, as you also mentioned, uh, we have a, a good financing uh, position also with the CSB extension recently by uh, Pfizer. So just one slide on our uh, pipeline. Uh, so uh, showing from, uh, let's say, the, the very start, the imatope design, then proof of concept studies, preclinical work, and then the clinical studies, phase one, phase two, and onwards. At the moment, our flagship and uh, leading program is in type one diabetes, where we are currently uh, doing a phase uh, two study, and that started in the fourth quarter of last year. In uh, MS, our preclinical package is also uh, complete. We're currently doing uh, the manufacturing uh, and uh, the uh, TOC studies. And we aim for clinical trial application uh, at the end of this year and a clinical start uh, in 2022. And then we have a couple of programs which are uh, quite uh, earlier uh, in RA, where we have a collaboration and license agreement with Pfizer. Neuromyelitis optica, which is a more rare autoimmune disease, uh, which uh, targets uh, the immune uh, response targets the, uh, the optic nerve and people can get blind. Mm. And then we also target, uh, recently we have started the project on celiac disease, uh, where it's not typical an autoimmune disease because the, it's actually a food antigen, gluten, that drives the uh, immune response. So a little bit about the imatope uh, approach. And I would like to start with uh, the introduction of a critical cell type that uh, is central to our mechanism of action. And this is a cytolytic CD4 T cell. And cytolytic T CD4 T cells are, are uh, you could almost see them as the new kids on the block. Uh, when I joined IMSIS, uh, before that, I, I, I did not hear about cytolytic CD4 T cells. Uh, but I did hear, I know very well, cytolytic CD8 T cells that can kill cells that uh, present peptides in, in, in uh, class two molecules. And that's very important for cancer uh, uh, therapy. Yes. But uh, cytolytic CD4 T cells recognize peptides, as is shown here, in antigen presenting cells uh, or peptide presenting cells, and they can then kill the antigen presenting cell. And this is something that you have to keep in mind and what you mentioned with this uh, stiper, uh, killing these antigen presenting cells in the, in the pancreas. And IMSIS is more or less redeploying this, uh, this process uh, to treat uh, autoimmune uh, diseases. Now, just for uh, uh, people that are uh, joining and, and I'm not so familiar with uh, what autoimmune diseases is, so this is a kind of high level slide. Every autoimmune disease is different and it's much more complex than I will show here. But it starts with that the autoantigens or some of the autoantigens become recognized by the immune system. And these autoantigens are then taken up by antigen presenting cells, cut in pieces and parts, peptides are presented in these class two molecules. So it's more or less a molecule to present peptides 
to T cells, as you can see here in this uh, magnification. You see here the, the, the peptide, the MHC class two, and then the T cell can recognize this very specifically by a T cell receptor. If it does recognize this, then it becomes activated. It starts to proliferate, which means that you end up with many of these T cells. And these T cells uh, drive the uh, pathology downstream uh, in the different target organs, depending on where these autoantigens are uh, uh, coming from and presented. So it can be in the nervous system in a case of multiple scler sclerosis or neuromyelitis uh, optica when it's the optic nerve in the joints in case of rheumatoid arthritis and a secondary gland such as in type 1 uh, diabetes. And so the next I would like to explain before I get to our mechanism of action is what imatopes uh, are. And actually, imatopes are quite, uh, quite simple. So I mentioned you have the autoantigens, which are cut into pieces, and peptides are presented at MHC class 2. And that's the blue part that you can see here. The white part is uh, the MHC class 2 molecule. The blue is the natural epitope, which is normally presented. And imatopes uh, are, are the same natural uh, epitopes but there are a couple of linking amino acids. And then there is this critical thioredox motif, mm -hmm. CXXC. And the C stands for a cysteine and the X can be any other uh, amino acid. And this, this motif, CXXC, is well known to be a thioredox motif and can reduce certain uh, oxidized uh, 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 proteins. And this molecule is, is actually hanging out of the MHC. It's not in the MHC. And we already know that, that, that amino acids that hang out of the uh, MHC uh, class 2 groove can have an effect on T cells. That is uh, quite well uh, known in literature. Uh, and what we have seen actually is that uh, if you have this motif, you get a very strong T cell activation and you drive a cytolytic phenotype of those T cells. So that brings me to uh, this slide where we see the, the, the mechanism of action. And now here uh, on the left hand side, it's, it's shown what, what happens when you inject uh, the imatope. In the patient, this is uh, injected in the, uh, in the arm and in mice, uh, as in, in disease models, you inject it also subcutaneously. What then happens is uh, locally, uh, this is taken up by uh, antigen presenting cell, mostly dendritic cells. They will go to the draining lymph node, so a place where these dendritic cells come in contact with naive T cells. And that's what you see here in this figure. And, and, and then in the meantime, this antigen presenting cell is presenting this peptide and can be recognized by the CD4 T cell. And because of this thioredox motif, as I explained in the previous slide, this CD4 T cell will then develop into a cytolytic CD4 T cell. And then more or less you are more vaccinated so these t cells can hang around for a long time they can circulate in the blood and they can enter uh, tissues uh, where they look for antigen presenting cells that present this peptide this peptide where which is also present in the imatope and if they see this peptide they become activated and start to kill the antigen presenting cell what is also of interest and so the effect is even more than only killing the antigen presenting cell at the same time, T cells, so these pathogenic autoreactive T cells that engage with this antigen presenting cell are also killed. And this means that further damage by these T cells because they can no longer be activated or are killed themselves, uh, the downstream damage is uh, prevented. And that is how uh, we see that the uh, hematopes can, can work. And as mentioned, we, uh, we have quite... Uh, uh, good proof of concept in, uh, in mouse models of autoimmune diseases, and I'll show uh, some example in the type 1 diabetes uh, program. So I'll move to the type 1 diabetes program and the preclinical data that we have. So here is uh, one of the well-known models in, in, in mice where you have spontaneous uh, development of type 1 diabetes is in the NOD mouse. And uh, what you can see here, if you're uh, untreated mice in time, just here on the x-axis, in time, more and more mice start to develop 
type 1 diabetes. Now, if you treat these mice here indicated with these arrow, arrows, so uh, this is only uh, five injections uh, spaced uh, within a week, uh, then you can protect the development of type 1 diabetes or largely protect. And this is a very long time uh, after uh, the last injection. So 20 weeks in the life of a mouse, that is quite a long time. Yeah. What is also interesting is that uh, what we call a loss of function, the LOF peptide, that misses this thyroidox motive. Hmm. If, you, if you treat the mice with that, they still develop uh, type 1 diabetes. So this thyroidox motive is essential for the uh, protection. Then maybe more evidence that this is really driven by cytolytic CD4 uh, T cells. Here in this case, uh, the, uh, the uh, regenerated T cells that are uh, specific for GAD, which is uh, one of the autoantigens in type 1 diabetes. So we have in vitro generated uh, cytolytic CD4 T cells, and we inject those in the NOD mouse. And then we look at the development of uh, type 1 diabetes. And we can see here, if you inject control T cells, you get the development of type 1 diabetes. Also, if you uh, generate uh, uh, cells that are uh, induced with this loss of function uh, uh, peptide, you still cannot prevent uh, type 1 diabetes. But if you generate the cells with a uh, imatope and you get these uh, cytolytic CD4 T cells, then you see also here protection against type 1 diabetes uh, development. And here on the right hand side, we can see this protection with the imatope. Uh, compared to the wild type uh, peptide uh, in terms of the uh, insulin, insulin lightest uh, index. This is a great slide, um, Antun. And I wonder if, you know, are you, um, is GAD your first, uh, you know, uh, imatope uh, or is it just one of several? Actually not. So, so we, in, in the NOD mouse model, we have used GAD uh, and insulin, pro-insulin. And actually, this slide, as you can show here, but it's in small letters, the imatope is based on uh, insulin uh, uh, B1323 region. Right. So this, uh, uh, both treatment with, uh, with uh, GAT-derived imatopes or pro-insulin-derived imatopes, uh, both work in the NOD mouse model. For the, for the human, we have a pro-insulin-based uh, imatope. Okay. And is there, is there an idea that you might get several vaccinations, ones against GAD, ones against, you know, insulin, or you're just sort of testing the waters mm -hmm. at this point? It's a very good question. And, and, and maybe I should go back to the uh, mechanism of action slide to explain this a little bit uh, further, because I didn't want to go into too much detail, but as you asked the question, so very uh, many autoimmune diseases do not have only one autoantigen. And, and maybe they start with one and then they spread. So which is called epitope spreading. Yeah. And this also happens in uh, type one diabetes. So as you can see here, these are two different antigens, but in locally in the tissue, it's, it's quite likely that an antigen presenting cell will present both peptides coming from both uh, uh, antigens or autoantigens. And these T cells are then killed as well as the APC. So as long as the pro-insulin is, is peptide is presented, then there is a wider effect on, on uh, uh, other T cells uh, that have other specificities for other autoantigens. And in fact, uh, we have data in, in uh, the uh, NOD mouse model and also in the MS model that this is really happening in a, in a mouse in vivo uh, model. Uh, of course, uh, we would like to see this uh, also happening in, in patients. And it's too early to, uh, to say uh, whether that's happening in patients, but that's the idea. If that is the case, then you do not have to uh, do this therapeutic vaccine with a mix of different uh, imatopes. Mm -hmm. No, it's very, um, agile. it's a technology and it's sort of like, a, you know, it's almost in a way it's a personalized medicine or has the, yes, absolutely. has the potential to be personalized medicine. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, certainly. The, 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 there is also some evidence that in, in certain patients with certain HLA type maybe get uh, is, is, a, is a more important autoantigen than uh, insulin. But uh, the evidence is not yet so strong from, from let's say, the patients and the clinic uh, that it is really uh, the case. Yeah. So what's next? Oh, this looks good. Yeah, I think I have uh, two more slides. So uh, besides uh, the mouse models that we do, we also try to more or less mimic what happens in a patient, but then do that in vitro. So we take, uh, in this case, uh, CD4 T cells mm. from uh, type 1 diabetes patients. In in vitro, we incubate them with these antigen presenting cells and, and, and imitopes, and we re-stimulate them uh, for, for a couple of times. And then it's, what you get is, is, is T cells that, that, that are specific because these have amplified, are specific and can recognize the, uh, the uh, imitope. And uh, we can check if they have the cytolytic phenotype. And, and this is actually what is shown here is the, the assay to show that they can kill the antigen presenting cells. And that is shown in these three panels. So here, uh, so this is more or less what is happening. You have the cytolytic CD4 T cell. You have a, a antigen presenting cell that is presenting the peptide uh, that is part of the imitope. And so this cytolytic CD4 should get activated and then can kill the APC. Now here, these are unloaded B cells used as antigen presenting cells. And so then the, the cytolytic CD4 T cells, which are co-cultured, are not killed. The killed cells are in these two uh, uh, quarters. Mm -hmm. If you lo load the, the, the B cells with peptides, then you see quite a substantial killing. So here that's up to 60%. And also you can feed the uh, antigen presenting cell with uh, pro-insulin itself. And then it starts to cut and digest uh, the pro-insulin and present the peptides. Then also you get about 60% killing of these B cells. So this is what we do as a proof of concept uh, with patient uh, T cells. In, 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 we have done that in type one diabetes and we've also done the same kind of things in uh, MS. Yeah, this is great. This is, this is some great data. So maybe this is the, the, the last slide that I have. Uh, so uh, what we have done next is uh, we have, we have uh, completed the phase one clinical study in uh, type one diabetes patients. And it was a successful study uh, that was uh, finished uh, towards the end of 2019 or mid 2019. And we have started this phase two stu study at the end of last year. And, and, and data about these clinical uh, studies and the plans uh, will be presented in this uh, forum on uh, August 5th. Thank you very yeah, much. We, yeah, thank you very much. We're looking forward to that. Um, and um, just uh, as a shout out, uh, Prevention Bio will be in that same session, which I think both companies okay. um, will uh, you know, have a lot to talk about together because uh, there's been a lot of discussion about how uh, maybe a one-two punch uh, to uh, those experiencing early onset of type one diabetes might be the best way forward. So um, you know, you've got this really unique technology. They have one as well. And maybe uh, I think that'll be a really interesting discussion. I'd also, uh, you know, a lot of people say, it, it sort of brings to mind this whole idea of don't shoot the messenger. But in this case, you guys are shooting the messenger, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Exactly, um, yes. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask a couple of questions, you know, um, you know, initially, where did this, uh, the idea of this technology derive from? Yes, Sh shall I stop sharing or maybe then sure. we can yeah, that's have fine. a bigger picture of ourselves on the, on the, on the screen. Um, yes, the, so the academic group in, uh, in Leuven, uh, they were working on uh, a mouse model of asthma uh, where they used uh, house dust mite, which is one of the major allergens for, uh, for asthma that drives uh, your asthma manifestations. And they were looking at uh, peptides uh, that were important for the activation of T cells. And they uh, actually saw with one of those uh, peptides that came from this uh, house dust mite uh, that, that the antigen presenting cells were killed. 
and they uh, they they noticed this uh, tire redox motive, which in that discovery, uh, this tire redox motive was slightly different than the one we are currently using. But basically, it was a similar uh, motive with uh, cysteine, two other amino acids, and then uh, a serine. And so they uh, they wanted to understand why these antigen presenting cells uh, were killed and, and, and found that this uh, depends on this thyroidox activity. Yeah, so another affirmation really of the power of it, learning from interdisciplinary, you know, science, uh, you know, and bringing one um, a technique uh, from one field into another. That's great. What about, um, you know, what about memory cells in long-term T1D? Um, you know, could this, uh, hypothetically, could your technology, you know, be useful in that case? Yes, I, we, we are targeting uh, all the, the, let's say, pathogenic T cells that are uh, in contact with this antigen presenting cell. Mm -hmm. um, whether that is uh, complete or largely complete, that, that is still a big question, uh, but in essence, we are targeting the, so the memory CD4 T cells. Now in, in type one diabetes, uh, in, in the CD4 T cells play a, a very critical role in the early part of the disease. And then also CD8 T cells start to uh, be uh, uh, playing a role and they are killing actually the, uh, the beta cells. Yeah. Uh, but they do depend uh, on help from the CD4 T cells. And so we expect that there is an impact on the number of these uh, CD8 uh, T cells, if, particularly if you come in early. And at the same time, if the CD8 cells also engage with uh, the antigen presenting cells, we, uh, we are also able to kill uh, those as, as this bystander killing, as I showed on the, on the slide. So it's not only specific for CD4, the bystander killing can also be CD8. And in that way, uh, we think we can uh, be effective. But, but I think it, the highest probability of success is when the earlier you come, mm -hmm. the more, uh, more uh, opportunities you have. Also because once the CD8 cells have damaged the beta cells, then of course they need to, uh, they, this damage is, 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 is considered to be quite irreversible. So there is no spontaneous regeneration. Uh, but there are other companies working on regenerative therapies and maybe at some point in the future, uh, this could be uh, interesting uh, to see if uh, after an imitope treatment, uh, such a regeneration approach uh, could be of interest. Yeah, certainly. And I also think that um, this leads me to this whole idea of eyelid implantation, biocyte, vertex, uh, and others, Sedulon, um, are all you know, heavily involved in eyelid implantation. And then of course, once one of the biggest constraints is once the eyelid imp is implanted or the ear eyelids are implanted, now the immune system wakes up and begins attack. And you can imagine that you know, your technology could be really, um, it, or possibly be impactful in that space as well. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of really interesting places that uh, you know imitopes might be um, used. So it'll be very yeah, interesting absolutely. to see how your company evolves. We cannot wait to hear about uh, you know what's going on with you in August. And um, I will just open it up. Is there anyone else who'd like to um, uh, send a question to the chat? Uh, Jemming, uh, is there a question from you? Not sure. I don't see anyone. People are on mute uh, yeah. as far as I can see. I'm asking. Any questions from anyone else? Okay, well, if you have any questions, um, I guess you can direct them to Nicholas Bovey, maybe at Imside himself or someone, um, you know, oh, okay. Yeah, um, wait, here's one. Yeah, 
Okay, I think that's I think that's good. We'll we'll leave it at that. And if anyone's interested in uh, asking Insight directly, they do have a contact um, email, and we will share that when we share that. There's, there's one question. Oh yes. What is oh, the antigen-specific memory T cell after immunizing? Let what is antigen-specific yeah. memory T after immunizing? No microphone. No mic at also, no microphone. What is the antigen-specific memory T cell after immunizing? Uh, I don't fully understand uh, the question, but we, we so we, 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 we more or less vaccinate with the imitope and we generate a CD4 memory T cell mm -hmm. that can recognize the uh, peptide that is normally presented by antigen presenting cell that process insulin, pro-insulin. Yeah, I think they maybe missed that one slide, it, it, you know, with the GAT, anti-GAT or anti-insulin. So yeah, maybe that's the answer. No mic at work. Um, okay, well, this has been really fantastic. Thank you, Insight. Um, again, we wish you all the best, and uh, we think your technology is fascinating, and we'll be um, in contact and speaking with you in August. Thanks very much, Monica, and everybody for uh, participating. It was fantastic, and uh, have a great evening. Bye-bye now. Have a nice day. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.